Luke chapter 2. We've been the month of December dealing with the story and the sub-stories of the nativity. And I tell you what, what a story we have to tell. And it's not myth or legend. These things historically happened and are yet affecting us today. Amen. We'll begin reading at verse 21. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. They also came to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah, the Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple... And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those sayings which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, the child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul as well, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Amen. You might have noticed the several references to the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, in this nativity story. And I, I want to seek to share this morning about a spirit-arranged encounter. A spirit-arranged encounter. We read of an encounter between the old man Simeon and the newborn Jesus in the temple. But it was a spirit-arranged encounter. We've already prayed, but I want to tell you, the Spirit's still arranging encounters with the Christ. You can be seated. This month, I celebrated my uh, 50th anniversary, and Sandra wanted to do something special, so she took me to, um, took me to Chicago. And uh, the night of my birthday, she had made reservations at a, at a, at a restaurant, and we rode the city bus several miles, then we got out and walked in the crowds of people on the sidewalk, and then we went into the foyer, the vestibule, the lobby of this restaurant, and it was crowded of people everywhere, and someone bumped into me, and I looked over, and it was somebody I knew very well. Now, that's always a shock. Amen? And uh, at first, I thought, because I've had those things happen before, I thought, isn't this a strange coincidence? Out of these millions of people in Chicago, and I run into someone I know well. Well, to come to find out, it wasn't coincidence. It wasn't accident. It had been orchestrated. It had been arranged. <clears throat> Some friends were already going to be in Chicago and discovered that Sandra was taking me there, and they made arrangements to celebrate my birthday with me, and it was really a nice time. Uh, but, you know, just that initial shock, I mean, to, to just run into someone that there's no reason they should have been there. But it wasn't coincidence. It was arranged. I want you to know, <coughs> excuse me, when someone meets Christ, it's not a chance encounter. 
This encounter between Simeon and the baby Jesus. Simeon had waited for the Messiah for decades, but he meets the Messiah as a baby one day in a very narrow window. I mean, think of it. In the time and life of Christ as a baby, it was just a matter of minutes that Jesus was in Jerusalem. And yet Simeon had an encounter with him and that narrow window of opportunity. But it was not coincidence. It was a divinely arranged encounter and the Holy Spirit brought it to about and to pass. It was arranged by the Holy Spirit. I want to tell us the truth of the gospel is when a man meets Christ it wasn't by coincidence when a man meets Christ it's not by accident when a man meets Christ it's by divine design of the Holy Spirit when you and I met Christ it's because the Holy Ghost prearranged it hallelujah no chance encounters with the Christ God orchestrates the meeting of each person with the Savior. Now a person can say no to the meeting and not yield. But oh, what a difference it makes when the Spirit arranges the encounter and a person says, yes, I want that Savior. I want that Messiah. In the story, the thing I've been talking about and I notice so prominently is the moving of the Holy Spirit. The moving of the Holy Spirit. I read the narrative that as a Jew, Mary and Joseph, Mary and Joseph did things with the baby Jesus according to the Jewish customs. And then 40 days after Jesus was born, they took him for another Jewish custom and actually a command of God to bring the firstborn into the temple to give him to the Lord and to show he belonged to the Lord. There was a sacrifice made. In fact, we see that Mary and Joseph were really poor people because there was a graduation of sacrifices according to a person's wealth. And the fact that they brought the turtle doves, the pigeons, shows that they were way down at the lower end of the economic strata. And they bring this sacrifice. We would call this, in a rough sense, a baby dedication. They brought Jesus to the temple for a baby dedication. And suddenly, as they walk into the temple, there's an old man with holy, fiery eyes that reaches out and plucks Jesus out of Mary embrace takes him into his arms amen I'm telling you a lot starts happening when Mary and Joseph gets to church hallelujah even Mary and Joseph and Simeon went to church and a lot of things started happening but they were all happening centered around Jesus I tell you things can happen in church because when Jesus is here the Holy Ghost gets everybody centered on Jesus focused on Jesus and things start to happen can you say Amen. Talking about a divine encounter. It happened by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that Simeon, living in Jerusalem, the Holy Ghost had moved on him. Not only moved on him, but revealed to him that he would not die until he saw the Messiah, the Anointed One. But it was more than that. Oh, we can see the Holy Spirit at work because the very day Jesus is brought by Joseph and Mary to the temple, the Holy Ghost moves yet another time on Simeon to bring Simeon to the temple to meet the Christ. I'm telling you all through the story, you see the Holy Spirit at work. Amen. In the life of Christ. How do we have the prophecies centuries before he came? How do we have those prophecies that the Messiah is coming? Because the Holy Ghost moved on men of old. And centuries before he ever got here, the Holy Ghost told the prophet, he's a coming. The Messiah is a coming. The anointed ones are coming. The Savior's coming. The suffering servant for all men is coming. And the Holy Ghost compelled them to write it down and to speak it. Hallelujah. How did Christ come into the world? We already preached that. The Holy Ghost came and overshadowed Mary. And Jesus was conceived by the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, it's all through the story. And yet again, we see the moving of the Holy Spirit and the story of Christ. 
Because when Christ is brought for his baby dedication to the temple, the Holy Ghost moves one more time on an old man Simeon and says, today's the day you're going to meet the Savior, the Messiah. But I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is still moving in relationship to the story of Jesus. Because even this morning, even the Holy Spirit can move as we're talking about the Savior. And he can say to someone, this is your day to meet your Savior. This is your day to meet your... I mean, it's a divinely arranged encounter with the mighty Savior and Messiah. Holy Spirit moves all through the story. I took note that it was the Holy Spirit that brought Christ to the people. It was the Holy Spirit that conceived Christ and brought Him from glory to a womb and to people. The Holy Spirit brought Christ to the people. But now in the story of Simeon, we see how the Holy Spirit brings people to the Christ. (laughs) Hallelujah. How many knows you were brought to the Christ by the moving of the Holy Spirit? Amen. That baby Jesus was hid from King Herod and all his spies and army men. I mean, Herod had him looking for the baby Jesus. Had him looking everywhere. And Jesus is right in the capital, right on King Herod's turf. And King Herod doesn't know where he's at. But an old man from across town, hallelujah, he knows exactly where the Messiah, what has been hid to the eyes of Herod, is made known to the eyes of the seeker. Hallelujah. I'll tell you where to find him. I don't know how it all happened and how we're to imagine it that it happened. But I believe that Simeon was used to the Spirit moving upon him. In fact, for decades, the Spirit had moved upon Simeon. A Savior is coming, a Messiah is coming. But on this particular morning, when Simeon got up, the Holy Ghost spoke to him and said, today's the day. Hallelujah. Today's the day. I don't know what he did there at the house. Brushed his teeth. Ate his breakfast. Maybe it's about 9.30. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit said, not only is today the day. Right now is the hour. Right now is the hour. Amen. Go ahead and head for the temple right now. I mean, he had a time Time down to the footstep. Oh, he had it time down to the yard. Even he, Jesus told, or the Holy Spirit told Simeon, Jesus, the Savior's going to be at the temple. You leave your house right now. Amen. Here's Mary and Joseph headed for the temple. Here's Simeon headed for the temple. And the Holy Ghost has prompted him every way. Maybe you need to pick up your pace a little bit, Simeon. That's a little slow. You don't want to miss him. Pick up your pace. Yeah, that's, no, no, that's too fast. That's too, yeah, that's it. Simeon that's just the right pace there you go that's it that's it and Simeon walks in the temple at the same time Mary and Joseph and the Messiah and their paths intersect their paths cross and Simeon has an encounter with the Messiah I'm telling you the Holy Ghost moves that way he moves on the heart of a person he may be saying this morning today's the day today's the time of salvation if you would listen to the Holy Spirit you could meet the Messiah this morning. You see, it's the role of the Holy Spirit to bring people and their Savior together. That's what He does. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I noticed as I read, He moved on Simeon. On Him. Affected Him. Influenced Him. I want you to know the eternal Spirit still moves on the hearts of men. And I'm grateful for that. You're in church. What you feel isn't just emotion. It's the Holy Spirit. He moves on people. But then the scripture said he revealed to Simeon. He said, you'll not die till you see this. He revealed it. You know, when God reveals something, that thing could not have been known or discovered by any other means. Not by brilliance of mind. Not by hard research. Not by, you cannot find it. And I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is still revealing things to people they could have never known had He not made it known to them. Hallelujah. He can make you know, make known to you this morning. There is hope. There is help. There is healing. There is salvation. There is an eternity. There is a judgment. There is a heaven. There is a, it's the Holy Spirit that reveals But not only did he move on Simeon and reveal to him, he literally moved Simeon from his house to the temple. 
Yes, Simeon had to say yes. But it was a spirit that was moving him. Oh, I've seen people when they yield. I've seen the Holy Spirit move them from their sin right up to the cross. Move them out of the pew right up to an altar of repentance. I'm glad the Holy Spirit knows how to move, folks. It's for an encounter with Christ. Jesus said in his teaching in John 6, 44, No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. Well, how does the Father draw men? The Father draws men to Christ through the moving and the power and the influence of the Holy Spirit. And we see it in Simeon's story. Amen. The Holy Spirit gave Simeon the hope that there was a deliverer. The Holy Spirit brought Simeon to the place. His path crossed with that deliverer. And then here it is. The Holy Spirit was there to arrange that Simeon could actually take the deliverer into his arms. It's more than just knowing about him. The Holy Spirit wants to enable you to take Christ into your life. And that brings us to the second part of the story. The first is the moving of the Holy Spirit. But the second part of the story is the meeting of the Savior. Prearranged. And so verse 28, Simeon took the baby Jesus in his arms. And he blessed God and said, Now I can go ahead and die in peace because according to your word. Oh, I get excited about the next verse. Mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Oh, there's so much in that story. But can you imagine? We have some of our young couples here, but can you imagine the alarm and surprise that Mary and Joseph must have had when a strange, by that I mean unknown man, older man comes up to them and just takes their baby out of their arms. How many moms would that really give you concern if some older person that you didn't know just walked up to you in church and just took your baby? Would you like that, Lord? Just come, some older man like me, you know, come up, just, just, just take Owen right out of your arms. Can you imagine Mary and Joseph's surprise when that happened? Amen. Simeon took the Christ, the Savior, into his arms. I think they knew it was going to be all right because I think there was a holy shine from his eyes. I think they could feel the Holy Spirit that was upon Simeon as he reached out for their aid. And I don't want to stretch this. But to me, the lesson is, just like Simeon took the Christ into his arms, the Holy Spirit wants to enable every person to take the Christ into their hearts. To receive Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen. But what I particularly like about this, I mean, he takes the baby in his arms and he begins to bless God. I'm telling you, if you really take Christ into your life, you'll immediately begin to bless God. That's why you may have not spoken the language of church. You may not have spoken the language of worship. But if you'll come and accept Christ and take Him into your heart, immediately there'll be a worship that comes out. However it comes out, you'll begin to bless the Lord. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a God. Amen. Whatever you know, hallelujah, glory to God. Amen. I mean, it's just natural when you when you have a hold of the Christ. There ought to be a blessing of God. But the thing that thrills me is this. He didn't look down and say, oh, I've seen a cute little baby. He didn't even look down and say, oh, I've seen, I've seen the future king of Israel. But he looked down and he said, God, I can die now in peace because I'm looking at salvation. <laughs> neither is there salvation in any other for there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved and when Simeon looked in the face of Jesus he said I'm looking at the salvation hallelujah oh hallelujah are you glad to be saved this morning are you glad to be saved last of all there's the message for mankind look what Simeon says He said, I've looked upon your salvation which thou hast prepared. This is an incidental note. I was just going to go right on by it, but I'm going to pause here. We are saved not by our own efforts because of what we have done and how we've done it. 
ever think about our salvation, God prepared it. Hallelujah. If you're here this morning, you don't know Him. God has prepared the salvation for your soul this morning. He said, Thou hast prepared before the face, my face, no. The face of the Jews, no. You've prepared before the face of all people. A light. Now this is, this is revolutionary for a Jew to stand in the temple precincts and talk about Gentiles. But the Holy Ghost is still moving. And Simeon gets the message. All people a light to lighten the Gentiles. Oh, and they were in darkness. And the glory of thy people Israel. He's a twofold Messiah. Yes, he's come as Israel's anointed one. But Israel's anointed one has come the light for all who are in darkness. Do you see it? This is why I get excited. He took baby Jesus in his arms and he said, I'm looking at your salvation. But he didn't just say, I'm looking at my salvation. Or I'm looking at the Jews' salvation. He said, I'm looking at the salvation of all people. Amen. The salvation of every person is in my arms, in the person of Jesus. It don't matter the nationality, the tongue, the color of skin, the economic status. It doesn't matter education. Amen. The salvation of all people is in Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, can you imagine what he must have felt like to know he was holding the Savior of the world? I like it when he says all people. That all includes you and I. And that Gentile that he's going to be a light to, that's us. Hallelujah. Oh, let me tell you again, that light to the Gentiles, those Gentiles, they be us. Aren't you glad the light has shined? Glory to God. It's not just a song. I saw the light. It was in Jesus. None are excluded. None are held back. None are turned back. He that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Oh, hallelujah. Tell me the story of Jesus. Glory to God. And then, verse 34, that's the message to mankind. He's the Savior of all. Simeon blessed him and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Jesus had said of himself, he that falls on this stone shall be broken, but whomever this stone shall fall shall be crushed. What is he saying? What is Simeon saying? A person's response to Jesus determines where, whether or not eternally they're going to rise or fall. A person's response to Jesus Determines that in eternity whether it's going to be a rise to heaven or a fall to destruction. Amen. And things have not changed. Simeon saw that by the Holy Ghost. The most important thing in people's life is how are they going to respond to the Savior. If you'll humble yourself, Jesus said, and accept Him, He will exalt you. But if you exalt yourself and reject him, you shall fall and be humbled. You know, this, this is it. You know, people want to limit this and say, well, if it works for you, it's good. If you like that gospel thing, that's all right. Leave us alone. It's not that simple. Simeon saw it clearly. It's, he's a savior for all men. And therefore, for all men, whether they rise or they fall, is determined by their response to the Savior. And then he put in a little parenthetical thought. He says straight to Mary, Yea, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul also. He's thinking clear up to the cross. Simeon saw it. I mean, all of a sudden, Simeon saw it by the Holy Ghost. And he knew the pain. You know, it's another sermon, but just briefly, can you imagine 
the pain of the mother Mary who had given birth to the Savior having to watch her son crucified? Mary, a sword is going to pierce through your own soul. Simeon, where's the glory? Hallelujahs. Where's, where's the great praises and the blessing of God? And where's the joy to the world? You're talking about a sword shall pierce through your own soul. I mean, look at all the inconveniences of Mary and Joseph in raising the Christ. Not only that, think of the babies that were killed in Bethlehem. I mean, the birth of Christ should have been a joyful thing. But because of sin and stubbornness and rebellion, there's death of babies, there's hardship and heartache. But you see, here's the point, and even many people today in churches miss it. God didn't just come to make us prosperous and, prosperous and comfortable and make everything pleasant. He came to save us. And there may be a sword that pierces a soul. There may be persecution. There may be heartache. There may be grief. There may be difficulty. But when you have Christ, you have eternal salvation. And it's eternal salvation that truly matters. And then Simeon had one more thing to say. This child is set for the fall and rise and of many in Israel. It's a sign spoken against. And he said, after he spoke that parenthetical thought to Mary, he said, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. You see, when you hear the gospel, you cannot be unchanged. It will reveal your thoughts. If you respond to the gospel, it reveals your thoughts. Your thoughts of seeing your need of God, your thoughts of repentance, your thoughts of seeing that there's no other help, no other hope. But when you reject the gospel, it reveals your thoughts. I don't need Christ. I can do it on my own. I can make it my own. I don't need to open my heart up to Him. It reveals your thoughts and my thoughts how we respond to the gospel. Oh, what a gospel. What a story. Would you come, music? Hallelujah. Even this morning when the story's been told, think about I want you to think about this. As a hearer this morning, and myself, when I studied it and prepared it, even this morning when you heard this story, it revealed your innermost thoughts if you were listening. It revealed your attitudes. Think about it. That's what the story does. But I'll tell you what thoughts God desires to be revealed. I need you, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. I can't make it without you, Lord. And I want to remember as we close this story, everything that happened that I've preached about and read to you was prearranged by the moving of the Holy Spirit. He brought Simeon to the Christ. And it's still the Holy Spirit that brings people to the Christ. You may have lost loved ones. You don't know how they're going to get saved. Keep on praying. Because the Holy Spirit knows how to bring people. So that their paths intersect with the Christ. I was reading this week about a man that was an atheist. An intellectual. And just to cause trouble really. He began to go to Christians and ask them hard questions. And he said, I didn't even really get the answers yet. I just started this process, and I was setting my thinking. I was stubborn. I didn't believe in God. I didn't believe in Jesus. I was just basically, you know, being a thorn. But he said one day, kind of preparing his questions, you know, he said, suddenly, I felt the presence of God. Now, he's, not, he's someone that didn't believe in God. But he said, I felt the, he's an intellectual. He's not just someone that's sentimental and mystical. He said, I felt the presence of the living God so real. I fell down and called out upon his name to save me. And I was changed from that moment. Oh, that was the same Holy Ghost that moved on Simeon. He moved on that atheist and said, today's the day to meet your Savior. I still believe in that eternal spirit moving on the hearts of people. I believe he's here this morning. We've made church about a lot of other things. 
But church ought to be about where people can encounter the Savior. Would you stand? Hallelujah. Let's lift our hearts and thank Him that the Holy Spirit brought us to the Christ. Amen. I want you to think back when the Holy Spirit brought you to the Christ. Could you praise Him? Could you thank Him? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, move this morning. Holy Spirit, move this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're here this morning. You don't have a relationship with this Jesus. What you feel this morning is the Holy Spirit. You could call it God's love. You could call it God's mercy and grace. But it's the Holy Spirit that is seeking you to bring you to an encounter with Jesus. A life-changing encounter. Are you here this morning? Would you reveal your thoughts and say, I need Jesus? Would you do that by coming this morning and saying, The Holy Spirit's moving on my heart. I need a Savior. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. Are you here? You just feel like you need Him this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we have some sisters come and pray with Billy again? Amen. Seeking the Lord. I want everything God has for me. Someone else like to join her this morning? I need Jesus. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. Amen. What you feel, amen, is God drawing you. Maybe, maybe you're a young person this morning. I mean, what you're feeling is God drawing you, saying, I want to put Jesus in your heart. Amen. Listen to music early this morning, just instrumental. All of a sudden, I thought, I know that song. Then it hit me, I ought to know I know that song. It was the one we sing as children. It was, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. But that's what the Holy Spirit does. He moves you to help you take Jesus into your heart and life. Are you here? Anyone else like to come? All right. I want to invite everyone that would come to pray. Merry Christmas, everyone. But let's have a season of praying. Someone's eternity. Eternity is being affected this morning. Let's come and pray all that would. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming and worshiping on this special day. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We thank you, Lord.